Hello, welcome back. I have a question for you. Do you think it's possible to take water and cool it below zero degrees Celsius, that's the freezing point of water, and have the water remain in the liquid state, not turning into solid? The answer to that question is actually yes. It's called a supercooled fluid. So what I've done is I've prepared a bottle of water. I have it in the freezer right over there. And I'm gonna bring it out and I'm gonna show you that it is in the liquid state, but I've cooled it slightly below the freezing point of water, zero degrees Celsius. And what we'll do is we'll give it a, a bang onto the bottom and start a chain reaction of the freezing that will then be pretty amazing to watch. So let me go grab it out of the freezer and we'll do it right now. All right, here we are with the bottle of water. I'm gonna wipe it very carefully. Don't wanna give it any sudden movements. And I'm gonna do this quickly before it warms up. Here's a bottle of water. You can see it's clearly in the liquid state. You can see the bubbles here. I'm gonna hold it from the top. I'm gonna get it one little bang from the bottom. One, two, three. And here you go. You can see it traveling down. You can see it traveling down very, 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 very slowly. Now let's take a look at what it looks like. It's more of a slushy now, but you can see I've turned it upside down and you can see that it's not, uh, uh, it's not uh, pouring out. So I'll do that a little bit more impressively. We'll pour this little bit of water, the little bit of water that leaks out here. And you can see that the majority of this water, whoops, I'm spilling a little water. The majority of it is totally frozen. All right, so how did we do that? That's called a supercooled fluid, right? Um, so it turns out that if you have a very pure water uh, without a lot of impurities, and you also have a very pure uh, packaging without dirt or anything like that, and this particular brand of water I've done many times before, so I already know that it works pretty good. There, uh, some water is gonna work better than others, right? If you cool it down, uh, below freezing. You can get a few degrees below freezing without it freezing solid. Now, it's true that if you leave the water bottle in the freezer for too long, for many, many days, or bring it down where the temp is really, really far below freezing, like minus 10 or minus 20 Celsius, then it's going to freeze anyway. You can't super cool it uh, too far below freezing without, you know, and have this happen. But you can bring it down a few degrees below freezing for a short period of time without the thing freezing it, without it freezing solid and staying in the liquid state if it's pure water. Let's talk about how this happens. So here are uh, my two little water molecules here. We have H2 and then O, right? And so in the liquid state, what the, what's going on is, as we've mentioned in previous lessons, the water can flow past each other. And it, it's bouncing, of course, it's bouncing off, but it can get close to each other. And, and so then the water is in the liquid state. As we cool it down, the velocity of these things slow down and slow down and slow down, and eventually they lock into a lattice like this. Now I can only hold two of them, but this pattern is repeating in three dimensional space. It turns out, as I mentioned in previous lessons, that the, the oxygen, the red ball here, has a very slight negative charge because it's pulling the electrons in closer from these hydrogen atoms. So, uh, and we've talked about this in previous lessons, this oxygen has a very slight negative charge and the hydrogens, because the, the electrons are being pulled this way, the electrons between these two atoms, the uh, hydrogen has a very slight positive charge and opposites attract. So when the water freezes, what happens is the positive charge on uh, this hydrogen gets attracted to the negative charge here and then it locks in position. In the liquid state, of course, it can flow past and bounce off as a lot of energy, but when we cool it down, it's not moving so fast and so it can lock into place like this. So what's going on when we super cool a fluid is we lower the temperature lower than the usual freezing point of water, but in order to freeze, usually what happens is there's what's called a nucleation site somewhere in the water. On a pond or a, a lake, or something, it's usually some dirt or leaf floating in there is where the freezing point will start. Usually, if there's some piece of dirt or impurity in the water, then right next to that little impurity, the very first ice crystal will form. That's what we call a nucleation site. And then from there, the uh, freezing process spreads out. If you look at time-lapse photos of ice freezing, you can see it usually starting at a point and then it spreads from there because that 
uh, organized lattice structure there starts in one position and then the next atom joins in, the next atom joins in, and so it spreads out from one location. But if we cool the water down slowly, and if there's no impurities, distilled water works the best actually, then you can get it a few degrees colder than what the usual freezing point is, and instead of an impurity, what we can do instead to start the process is give it a nice uh, uh, a jolt or some kind of a, a, a physical shock to the bottom. What that does is some of the water molecules, which of course are freely moving, but very slowly, when you give it a shock, it kind of like causes through random collisions uh, some small portion of them to get locked into position. And once the process starts, then just like normal freezing, the adjacent water molecules fall into position. So it's almost like dominoes. Instead of falling down, they start kind of falling up into order because the electric attraction between the negative charge of the oxygen and the positive charge of the hydrogen, then everything sort of falls into place and it looks like that little chain reaction. So that's called a super cooled fluid. Couple of things if you wanna try this at home. The more pure the water you can get, the better. Don't use a dirty glass or a glass out of your dishwasher or anything like that, it's not gonna work. What you need to do is get a bottle of water, preferably distilled water, and uh, try to not, uh, you know, try to keep it clean and so on and so forth. And also try to freeze it uh, in a position where it's below freezing, but not too far below freezing. And also don't leave it in there for three weeks because through chance collisions, if you leave it in too long, it will freeze anyway. In fact, I put two bottles of, of, of water in the freezer to do this for you. One of them actually froze solid and the other one is what we did right here. So you may end up having to do it a few different times, but I encourage you to try it. It's really fun to watch and you can see a visual representation of the freezing process of ice with a super cooled version of water we call super cooled water.